So we, I think we can start. Huh? Is that okay? We can start. And today we have uh, Gian Domenico Palumbo, who will talk about non abelian X fields in momentum space of multiband topological phases. Please. So first of all, let me thank the organizer for this opportunity. To... Um, yeah, so my talk is mainly based on two uh, very recent uh, references. So that you can find on our on the uh, short paper, actually, is a letter. Um, and uh, try, if I have time, to also introduce uh, in the second part of the his second work that is in part of uh, this momentum space. Like, first of all, to give some, you know physical motivation of this idea. So what look for uh, somehow uh, momentum space, X fields, uh, what, and why they are interesting or useful for to understand particular multiband topological phase. I mean, uh, a lattice model, fermionic model with degenerate bands. Okay, so but first let me give you some, uh, uh, just a very brief introduction about topological phases, just so, you know, when we study topological phase of matter, I mean, interacting or free system, we can follow different approach. For instance, uh, we can use uh, quantum field theory, in particular topological quantum field theories to describe the bulk states, or, you know, Church-Simon theory, BF theories. And of course, on the boundary, we have powerful approach uh, because uh, uh, you know, in this way, we can all, also deal with interacting phases, not just with free uh, models. So interaction can be nicely described in this picture. But the, let's say, let me put it this way. There is a limit in this approach that we have to look always to the infrared limit. So we are always in this infrared regime. So we are in the continuum, basically, when we consider this system. Of course, uh, I mean, there are also lattice theories or lattice model that we can eventually build up. But, you know, I have in mind mainly effective field theories. How, oh, really? Okay. You hear me? No, it's work. It's okay? Okay, so as I said, this is an effective field theory approach that works in the infrared limit. Um, clearly, when we mind a uh, uh, tight bonding model, lattice model, uh, we usually consider a topological band theory. Topological band theory, where, which is a very natural way to deal with, uh, you know, topological phases because, uh, you know, by looking at the band structure, we can directly derive topological invariant from lattice model. We don't need to go to the, to the continuum and the infrared regime. And okay, the third way that I'm not going to discuss at all, so let's say this is the first way, second way, third way, by using an entanglement, quantum information, right? But as I said, this is not uh, part of this uh, discussion, so I just mentioned for, uh, you know, uh, for completeness. So now, um, this talk is really completely based on this second way to deal with uh, topological phase of matter. So I'm going to show you that, uh, you know, well, in the momentum space of a certain uh, uh, topological phases, we can build the six field, and then there are uh, some uh, interesting topological invariant that characterize the bulk states of this system. Um, however, you know, topological bent nowhere because uh, indeed so when we have in mind topological band theory we have in mind uh, let's say Berry connection Berry phases or quantum metrics another way to uh, you know to build engage invariant uh, system uh, yeah so for instance okay in the abelian situation we can just have this is the definition of um, of the Berry connection Right, so this is the, let's say, this is the simplest situation when we want to deal with a, a churn insulator. Uh, we have just, uh, we fill only the lower band, we calculate the Berry connection, then the Berry curvature, right, we on uh, the 
at the chair number. Um, but let me stress a little bit the story. So this guy, so the very connected, can be seen as the dual version of uh, an ele electromagnetic field because in, uh, in space time, we know that we can build a connection. We, we have connection, you want uh, time, and these are what we call electromagnetic fields. So somehow you see there is a sort of uh, uh, yeah, duality between momentum space, real space. With this guy, we can build a or a, a theta term or axial electrodynamics. With this one, we can understand the, you know, the really to compute the topological invariant um, directly in the momentum space of the band theory. And and also push more this. Uh, there are a lot of relation between topological bands. And because for instance, uh, so here, besides Berry connection, we have also the so-called the Skirmion number. Skirmion number, it's really, it's nothing but the winding number associated to a semionic uh, moment to space. And we know that this is exactly, let's say dual, to real skirmion, to the topological defect, you know, the topological charge of the skirmion. And also monopoles. So uh, from this uh, in, in three dimension, we, we can have uh, uh, formally in electromagnetism, electromagnetism adding monopole magnets. And at the same time, you know, the, the topological defect uh, that is associated, for instance, with valve cement is nothing but a, a, is a, a dipole. So again, just to stress, so we have uh, some topological defect that uh, you know we know that exists in field theory on in uh, real space system, and then we have uh, found many examples that uh, this is a similar kind of topological defect exists in momentum space, and they are generated by the band structure. So if this is a situation, and here I'm talking only about a billion situation. Here it's a your number is a, just you know a non the band how is the situation when we have a degenerate so it's more complicated because with the degenerate with the degenerate band for instance we have to consider or even in terms of the berry connection so there is the billion uh, berry connection introduced generally by will check at z in the 80s and and we know that i mean can be a u or sun gauge connection just I write it for you this um, definition here. So, uh, sorry, I forgot to say that, of course, here I mean uh, this is a, just a block uh, wave. In this case, is uh, for the non degenerate band, the lo lower band, instead the block wave function. So, and this is the usually, yeah, this is the definition. I have uh, where A, let's say the internal index A and B, goes from 1 to N means that there are n degenerate bands, let's say. Okay, clearly there, there are also particular bands can be degenerate in some edge or extreme case degenerate for, for every k into space symmetries. So when uh, we have, for instance, topological insulator with degenerate bands, the degenerate are in the the time reversal invariant point in, in the zone. If I pose uh, beside ever, and this is important detail. On to impression symmetry. I don't know what. Uh, I'm very sorry, there is an audio problem. I can use the microphone. Uh, yeah, maybe it's better. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, now it's better. I can loud more. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, and maybe let, uh, let me stress another things before going more to the details of the of the, the this idea. So even if we, we are to, I'm talking about a, a free fermionic system on periodic lattices. So I'm, I'm imposing, of course, transition invariance for simplicity, then because I can fully transform my type body model from real space to momentum space. Uh, you know, we can deal also with interacting system. If we, you know, if we impose, uh, you know, 
So interaction can also be considered in this picture of Venn theory. Well, actually is when, uh, you know, if we follow this idea by uh, new uh, Taules and Wu, so this is uh, an idea from nine, back to 1985. So where they, this guy considered the, uh, you know, periodic boundary condition in the real space, and they introduced some twist phase. So basically twist phase means, you know, that uh, from your, uh, um, let's say real uh, coordinate, you twist, so you introduce some flux here. And then you say, okay, now I want to study, you know, I want to derive the so-called many body very connection, many body very phase, where now means that from the momentum space of your uh, lat um, lattice mode from band structure, you go, you study the, you know, the very connection or uh, you know, the topological invariant in the twist angle space. So you go from K space to this, uh, uh, yeah, twist angle space. And this is a way, um, yes, to consider also to introduce interaction and uh, in this order. Of course, you don't, you don't have bands anymore, but through this trick, you can still uh, define uh, a well-posted uh, but very phase in this, uh, in this uh, artificial space and understand a little bit how the system, yes. is my fault or is it a generic fault? No, it's not your fault. Okay. Uh, I'm very sorry, but uh, let's try now with this, uh, this way. Yeah, now is better, I think. I can, all right. No, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, this is just, I want to mention this because, uh, uh, quantum field interacting system, but also, you know, this idea to extract topological environment, uh, you know, in this parameters are important interaction. I'm not going to talk about interaction, but this can be just, a, uh, you know, I already say to you a possible um, when we deal with interaction. Okay, so this is just uh, uh, this was a, just a brief argument. Um, now let me say um, something about what, uh, what system I'm going to introduce and study and show to you in details. So I consider, okay, in the first part of this talk, as I said, it is based on, on the first paper, I'm going to talk about the Hermitian system. So first of all, what are the assumptions? I, I consider lattice model Hermitian. So with this Hermitian condition, okay? Because in the second part, and just if I have time, I will go and move to the so-called uh, pseudo emission system, which are uh, not emission system, and uh, you know defined in this way. So, so this is the, the relation between the Hamiltonian and uh, the H dagger Hamiltonian. So in the, in the second part of the talk, uh, I would say okay, there, is, there exists a class of system that uh, has this uh, feature that is called a pseudo Hermitianity. And why it's interesting this story because uh, it's true that it's not emission anymore the system, but still you can have uh, completely real bands, and you can actually prove that in this in this system are interesting because uh, they completely uh, support the bulk edge correspondence to the topological regime. Uh, there is no there is basically no skin effect, and all the topological invariants like in the emission situation. But let, let's focus now on, on this case. So this is a Okay, I completely translation invariant system. And now I want to also study this other uh, situation with uh, uh, time reversal symmetry. So I want to consider um, time reversal invariant system in two for D, but in two different classes. So is uh, uh, the first case that is that is um, you know the standard case for spinful system is where Uh, and then uh, there is this the other class that where the t square is plus one. Now this is the I can. No, it's okay. I mean, 
I guess at least they, they can hear me. <laughs> okay, so I'm saying that I'm going to discuss different models, uh, some in this in particular, the BH model again in this class, but from this alternative point of view, and uh, uh, spinless fermions. Uh, together with uh, together the inversion symmetry. So inversion symmetry also plays a role in my story and is the standard inversion symmetry. So I, I'm going to discuss basically uh, T cross E invariant uh, topological phases. And actually why, why I want to do this? So there are important uh, reasons. In particular, okay, when you have in mind spin pool system, topological insulator, you can uh, simplify the calculation of your set to invariant if you also import the inversion symmetry. This is simplified, as I said, also in the Kin main model, you know, the calculation of set to invariant. But in this second case, it's even inter more interesting uh, for, you know, for recent uh, um, research in topological phases, because uh, when you impose uh, also time reversal invariance and inversion, but you keep also the generate bands. So you end up uh, with uh, a new class of system that are now they call it Euler insulator. So Euler insulator means uh, something important. Because uh, in this uh, first class here, so when there are degenerate bands and you want to study this from the very connection point of view, we know that we have to use this, this guy here in the standard case. And this guy in this situation is an SU2, uh, basically gauge field in your momentum space. But when you are here in the second case, so here, so basically you have to be in SU2 gauge connection, but here they are SO2 because uh, why so? Because here we still get uh, a complex a, a block uh, wave function, but here, because of this condition here, together with the time reversal inversion, sorry, so we we, uh, we end up with real block uh, um, eigenvectors, and there are no share numbers. So here it's impossible to define share numbers in this situation here, but we can define an alternate. So share numbers, the churn class, is something that is very. It's peculiar, it's not so universal. Chern numbers in one D, so one, two, three, uh, first, second, and the third chern numbers on are really associated to complex. Uh, yeah, block uh, wave function, okay? While, so if I have, uh, as I said before, real block wave function, then the only thing that I can define here is the so-called Euler class, which is something well known from the you know algebraic topology. I mean, in the, you know, the classification of a, a real uh, vector bundle. So here, mathematically speaking, here we deal with complex uh, vector bundle, and here real uh, vector bundle. So the, the class are completely different. Um, and this is again just that I will so I will I'm going to discuss about these uh, two models that are well known in literature already, and then I want to introduce uh, at the, near the end of the talk uh, also a new class that uh, uh, comes from uh, this uh, Higgs field that and has also topological uh, uh, there are some new topological phases. So uh, from so these are the two D, and then I I will go to to the three D case, and this three D case will be just uh, uh, for the this t, uh, t square plus one with an inversion symmetry with the so-called the sub lattice symmetry, uh, the chiral symmetry, okay? So let's call S. Uh, the, so this would be the, the three symmetry that I need in 3D to find uh, a new topological phase. Uh, again, this is just an introduction. Now, um, so let's me... Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, yes. So for the real vector bundle, uh, can you define a Stiefel Whitney class? The Stiefel class. Exactly, exactly. So the, the, the Euler is basically related to the Stiefel Whitney class. Oh, okay. So in 2D, we know that the, the Euler number is a leaf to basically the second Stiefel Whitney number. In, in 3D, it's more complicated. Um, that's why, um, yeah, I'm going to propose something uh, that still I have to understand completely from the point of view of Stiefel Whitney. 
So because, uh, uh, because okay, what is the story also? Because as I said, in 2D, this is the only possibility. So in terms of gauge theory, so only SO, SO2 is compatible with the Euler, uh, insul, uh, to, to the Euler invariant. This means uh, that I need uh, um, two degenerate bands and then other bands or whatever they are that are, so there is a, a gap here. So if I have three degenerate bands, so I cannot define this guy because only when there are two degenerate bands with inversion T square plus one, then this guy at least is well posed. In 3D, uh, I'm, I'm moved to SO4. So I will consider a model with four uh, degenerate bands. So uh, the, the lower band is four fold degenerate. And then I will uh, keep this uh, gauge, uh, this uh, Lie algebra, and I have to introduce a, a, a generalization of this guy. Because uh, uh, I mean, I have to generalize. I mean, this picture, and and, and I'll show you how to do this. Um, okay. So, so again, uh, this is okay. The motivation is then okay. If we have this sort of duality, also in this case, SU two, right? So we know that uh, the Young Mills field in particle physics, I mean, for the electroweak interaction, is an SU two field, and can be seen as a dual. Of, this is the sorry, the, the, the very non abelian very is basically a dual momentum space version of that thing. Clearly, um, you know, the Young Mills is uh, theories and action to give equation of motion. This guy doesn't come from any equation of motion, for this. I want to be clear here. You build from your band structure. So, this is a really crucial difference with, uh, you know, field theory uh, when you do, you know, uh, when you calculate the equation of motion and from the action principle. So, there is no action principle. But it's a, just a guide. So, it's a, it's a way to see, okay, let's try to push more these uh, analogies between. Uh, Let's say particle physics and band theory here. So, what is the missing point that, at, at least, uh, was only partially understood? Uh, well, was proposing a paper that I'm going to tell you, and then, uh, but not for band theory. So, the idea is that uh, why we don't try to build uh, uh, the dual version of the X field in momentum space from the band structure? So, let's see if there are any band model, lattice model that give rise, you know, in the momentum space to something that we can call X field. With X, uh, sorry, I mean. Uh, Something that uh, is a complex non-abelian uh, scalar field is what I mean with X. So it's not related to any spontaneous symmetry breaking or other things. It's, but uh, there is another reason why I call uh, this guy X is just because also carries the same topology of the X field in the real space that people have found in uh, you know in particle physics and uh, quantum field theory. So how I okay let's let's define this guy now. So now. This is my uh, first of all. Um, as I said, because uh, I want to, I have, uh, let's say again, uh, this uh, both inversion and time reversal, I pick up the simplest family of models that satisfy naturally these two symmetries. And these models are just, you know, Hamiltonian type one Hamiltonian that I can always write down like, uh, um, you know, basically, uh, let's say, d vector. And some, you know, and, you know, gamma matrices. Now, uh, this is really the most, the, the simplest family or model that satisfies the, you know, I, I will tell you the details. Of, but let me first say, these gamma matrices, um, well, depend on that. In okay, in, in two dimension, of course, I have in mind uh, four times four uh, Dirac matrices. While in, in 3D, in the, in, the, in the last model that I will show to you, I will pick up eight uh, time eight to give us messages. So these are the reducible representation of the for algebra. And clearly, we know that this is uh, completely, it's part of this, of the BHZ, uh, BHZ model. Of course, we know this in uh, the spherical case. But when we pick up the real representation of the for algebra, then we are in the Euler insulator uh, regime because uh, we need uh, a real representation. So I have to introduce uh, three gamma matrices in this model that are real. Well, at least in any case, satisfy uh, T squared plus one and T uh, inversion. And finally, I will tell you later on that, uh, this one, the last one. So, okay, this, this is the family. So this is really the simplest things that I can have in mind. And now I, I introduce, uh, so this is my definition now. Let me just, uh, let me introduce this definition now. So the definition of this uh, field is the following. So let's say, okay, again, I like in this case for the belly, 
I have in mind in, in general and the general bands where a b goes to one to m, and then uh, just I can uh, I can write the following. So here, let's say. Uh, ah, so I have, okay. So now, who is this guy G? G. This is my definition. G is 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 basically a matrix. So it's a matrix. Ah, uh, because sorry, let me also write down in a, in a more general way. So you can write down uh, basically these are in component, right? So the matrix form in the gauge space is this guy here, from this guy. That you can decompose in a vector way, because now these are the component that T are the generators of your underlying D algebra. And for instance, uh, uh, you know, for the BHZ, this is SU2, the generator SU2, or for the Euler is uh, SO2. So let's uh, pick up. But again, and then you, and then for the third dimensional case, that would be SO, uh, sorry, SO2 here, SO4 here. So these are the main three groups that I'm going to consider. Okay, now it is not the end of the story because it is G is not a generic matrix. So the idea, but still most of the details needs to be understood. So what I can tell you that in all this model that, that work, so the G is for sure associated to a symmetry of the system. And in particular, the G is identified with uh, a, the two dimensional uh, inversion symmetry. So make, who is, what, what do I mean with this? So I mean that, uh, I know that there is a general inversion in, uh, but I pick up, uh, you know, the sub-dimensional case where basically, uh, let's say, okay, this is the, the, the matrix associated to, to my inversion. Okay, let's pick up also KX, KY, KZ. This is true in uh, all these cases, as I said. So this is the, the transformation. So it flip uh, just for, for instance, as an example, only kx and ky. So there is this inversion and keep uh, kz. But if there is no kz, then uh, flip for both and we don't have kz continue. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is the, the thing. So, uh, so this, you know, sorry, let's, let's put it this way. So I, I call them u to the uh, for inversion. Okay. Now, if you, but you mean this, I mean, like, as I said, it's just a definition. So I want to work on, the, on this definition. And then I work, I, it's important, I want to work with this specific uh, uh, gauge groups, uh, gauge uh, the algebras. Then, then you, you can see that it's always through the following condition. So basically, uh, okay, input tilde, because I think it's better here. So the tilde, so when I do the matrix product of these two guys, this is always uh, a constant times the unitary matrix. Uh, this is quite simple to see this because in the representation theory now of these groups. So you, as I said, here we have a Pauli matrices. Here we have the uh, only, you know, uh, sorry, we have, um, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> we have Dirac matrices complex. Here we have the real um, representation of the Dirac matrices. And here we have uh, the A times A. So they square to one. So this is an obvious condition that you get always. So my definition of this field at the end is the normalized version. So I want, so this is my real definition of this guy. So it's a one over square, square root of this is just a, it's not a constant, eh? sorry. It's a, it's, this is a k-dependent function, but multiplies always an identity of this, uh, of this guy. So, so I want to work with this. So my definition of my Higgs field, I call this uh, the Higgs. That can be, Again, SU2 or SO2 or SO4. Okay. Why? Okay. Why is normalized? There is there is a reason why I want the normalization. So first of all, okay. Let me say that usually when you have a scheme number here, the binary number, you have always a normalized vector. So if I have a vector here, I want to now enable a normalized matrix, right? And then I want to compute what is the simplest thing that we can compute is the widening number of the Higgs field. Because this is something known in the field theory. So, I mean, when people have studied, you know, for instance, uh, the so called uh, post monopoles, so these are the, the non abelian generalization of Dirac monopoles. So, usually, you know, in, uh, in field theory, you have this kind of lagram, like, um, you say, you, you know, you can break down the, your uh, uh, Young's theory, and then you say, okay, then. Uh, there is an X that breaks the symmetry. Uh, then you have 
you have also the coupling between a complex, uh, you know, a gauge field, what we call the Higgs, in this way. Uh, yeah, plus we have a potential also, but this is the covariant derivative, of course. So uh, d mu is just this, and this is the non abelian eh? important. So, so I was uh, talk uh, polyot of discovery there. So in certain circumstances, I mean, if, if, even this is not topological field theory, but support topological defect. So this is also another analysis again. So we, we don't need necessarily topological field theory to get some topology. We just also need a completely dynamical gauge theory that support topological defect, vortices, solitons, fermions, and uh, monopoles. And again, so the monopoles, again, in this case, so what is the topological invariant of uh, uh, an X field in, in, in 3D? So that's, again, it's very similar to the Dirac uh, story, right? So I am have, I have in 3D space, three dimensional space. Then I have a, a static defect, static defect somewhere. It's not, uh, okay, different from the Dirac. Um, it's a smooth, so it, it's not, um, so how I can say, so does not diverge at the origin. So if my monopole is my, is the origin of my axis, X, Y, Z, it, it's, smooth, it's a smooth function, it's, it's not, uh, there, there are no divergence. So this is the difference compared to the Dirac, where we have divergence when we go at zero, the origin of the monopole. And uh, so basically, so these people found is that, uh, um, you know, it, it's, it's a defect. I can wrap again in an analogy. I can I can define an SU two sphere, right? And uh, in, in real space, again, it's a real space feature. And then you define uh, just the wedding number of these guys. So the number, the wedding number means okay. The sphere is, uh, is this guy here. So you have uh, I. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I forgot. When I introduce the Latin index, is for space only, and you know Greek index space time. But so I will use mainly so here Greek so space time. Just space that can be real space or momentum space, but it should be the entry. So, okay, so you have i, j, k, and then, uh, well, that, because it's, there is uh, an underlying uh, non abelian, uh, you know, uh, the algebra, then the, I have to take the trace of this guy. And then, uh, well, then again, there is this field, the Higgs field, and the derivative in space. Of, so, it's very similar to the Skinner number, if you like. I mean, it's just that it's non abelian. So, and the intrinsically, you know, uh, you know, there is a trace that you don't get in the, in the spinner number. Okay. And they thought, okay, that this is well put, it's a completely well put topological number, quantized is that number. So, I mean, you can, you know, it, 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 that up, so everything is fine here. So, how we can, so can, the question is can we have something similar in momentum space, you know, band structure? Where now I have in mind two things. I have in mind, so if we pick up a sphere, well, that, that would be a sphere. Now let's let now replace, you know, x, y, and z with k, x, k, y, and k, z. Okay. So it's the analogous, right? So if I have a semi metal, let's say um, a, a Dirac, let's say if I have a Dirac semi metal, okay, I have degenerate bands because I have my you know, Dirac cone here. W degenerate, let's say that you know the simplest W degenerate one. And then I can uh, really do exactly the same story here. It's exactly the same, so I don't write again. So because now my sphere is in uh, to be wrap the you know the let's say the the, the Dirac cone, not the pi cone now, there is a Dirac cone, and then here again just this P is not the, the P of the you know this uh, Georgi Gasho theory, but it is the P my definition here, the um, yeah, this one, this guy here, that comes from the band structure. So, and so I'm saying, okay, um, just to say, this is a Dirac semi metal. Uh, that means, uh, what is, okay, let's write a simple Hamiltonian for the Dirac semi metal. You know, it's a lattice model, but I want to just linearize the theory. So, a linear version would be just a gamma one, uh, right? So, okay, x plus gamma two. Well, actually, okay, let's, let's write that. Gamma x, uh, gamma y, ky, plus gamma z, kz. Okay, so this is just again, but comes from a tight body model. And again, so if we do this calculation, so I pick up this Hamiltonian, I put in my definition of this guy, it comes from, you know, up in uh, here. So everything comes from this guy. So we know what is the, the, the block uh, eigenvector. I put the 2D. Uh, 
you know, this guy that invert only kx kxy. It's a symmetry because I start from assumption that I want inversion symmetry, so it's there. So I define this uh, guy here, up to normalization, and then I put everything inside this guy. And what I get here, I mean, in the sense that it's better to uh, take the absolute value, is two. If we start, okay, just an example, but if you start, let's say, from an eight times eight representation, okay, of, you know, it's a so called doubled uh, Dirac semi metal that comes from different, uh, okay, the, the reason why it's there is for the different crystal symmetry, this double degenerate, for instance, is um, non symorphic Dirac semi metal, you get this double uh, picture, so you have a, uh, now really you double everything here in terms of bands. And then you end up that uh, you end up with this is four. So basically, this number is just counting how many by are there. So you know, <laughs> it's just a counting of the degenerate bands. It's not special, but at least it's compatible with the picture that uh, you know it's an integer number. It's a the number just because it's counting the number of degenerate bands. Um, what now? What we can do for the 2D time reversal invariant k that I told you before? So. If I pick up, uh, let's say now, um, a BHZ model, okay? I don't want to linearize now. I want to write down the full uh, momentum space by band. So I have again, gamma, uh, gamma X sine KX. So I'm, you know, you put in a square lattice here, like the original BHZ model, gamma Y sine KY. And then, uh, okay, we're to be massive case. So we have cosine kx minus cosine of ky, right? Okay, it's important for that it's now a mass. So again, if you have only this x, so what is the topology of the x for a good, you know, two-dimensional system? As I said here, this makes sense in 3D because the topological defect, but what is a topological defect in 3D? It's not there, but you can think it's, the analogy is uh, like, a, you know, similar to the, the analogy between the chain insulator and the bulging metal, right? In the chain insulator, you can think, okay, the monopole is in the third tissue dimension. So it's there. And then, of course, the integral is on the 2D torus. And here, we can exactly do the same. You can imagine that this uh, top polygon like monopole is in the third dimension because it comes from, yeah, from the bulging metal, direct uh, chain metal from the extra dimension. So here, we just, uh, you know, we replace then uh, the blue, and now we have the blue and zone because in the insulator, I feel only the two lower band. Here, I don't have this because it's flat. So it's a K, well, K2, KX, KY. Just, uh, uh, yeah, I have to remove this guy. And this, I have this in my definition. This is still topological. It's still the white number on the Bilbao zone. And, and what I get here in this situation here, that, uh, well, again, compatible with the standard calculation of your, uh, uh, of, of the, um, you know, the topological invariant for the PH set. Because what, what I get is that the, the absolute value of this, is, is basically one. Yeah, okay, let me be precise. I want to. Uh, yeah, the, the calculation is basically this is uh, when uh, the master modulus is smaller than two, is one, and this is zero. Yeah, when the modulus of M is uh, bigger than two. Again, is a, you know, if you do the standard calculation with the, you know, the standard Fukin uh, calculation, or there are many ways to calculate the two, you get this. So it's compatible, it's, it's, compatible. It's, it's nothing special. It's just an, an, an alternative way to calculate again, this topological number for something that is well known. So nothing really exciting It's just, uh, but at least uh, this is a check to say that this idea at least uh, works in this case. So we have uh, something compatible with Dirac semi metal and something compatible with uh, the BHZ. We can also check that the Euler is completely compatible with this picture. What, again, let me also again write to you. So the Euler, it's really, you, you can say, okay, you know, you call Euler, it's exactly the simplest version. It's again, it's this uh, 2D type banding Hamiltonian where now gamma X, gamma Y, ah, sorry, I forgot, gamma Z are real. So there, there are no complex uh, terms. So you say, okay, this guy uh, support real um, block again vectors. So it's impossible, there are no sure number on, there is no also spin I mean, it's, it's different things. It's something different. And yeah, exactly. The, the Euler also works in this situation so with this formula, or also I have uh, another formula that I want to introduce to you. Um, I think I have, maybe can I have five minutes to more because of the you know, trouble with the microphone? Okay, thanks. Okay, no, it's just I, I'm looking at another problem. 
All right. Okay, so this is the picture for now with this, um, you know, the topology that, you know, associated only to this uh, each configuration. We can go a little bit beyond this picture now because I want to introduce to you, uh, you know, a sort of a higher form generalization of very connection. So, as we also discussed, and also in other talks, that came up uh, with, uh, you know, some more topological quantum field theory like the F theory. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. In real space time, we have also higher form form issues that are important in triple one dimension. For instance, but what about the momentum space? Can we have you know something that can build from the lattice or something that we guess? So that, you know, I want to build uh, not only a field to form and not only a field form because the, the Abelian version, or if someone is interested, was already done <laughs> by myself. So in 2018. So and but for Abelian, so for uh, non-degenerate bands. So there is um, a paper, also another uh, short paper that this is great, uh, where I propose it uh, together with my collaborator Russell uh, Goldman, um, the idea that you can build in, in you know higher form field in a higher form connection momentum space, uh, generalize these things, and but works only for non non degenerate uh, system. Like uh, that's why we were able to, for instance, generalize the Weissman metric for the because in, in 4D, there is an analogous of the Dirac monopole, but in that case, you need an higher form to see the topological charge. So it, it's always, so this higher form exists in any dimension, but the more you go up in the dimensionality, and the, the more you need indices, uh, I mean, you, you need to increase the, you know, the form to a higher, higher form. Um, here, instead, because now I have this non abelianity just because of inversion together with time reversal, I need to build uh, something that, uh, is more compatible with the SU2. I mean, it should be compatible with SU2, SO2, or SO4, or in particular SO4. This is the, I, I want to give you one example of this um, result. So, how we can build uh, uh, now, let's say, this higher form stuff. Again, this is just, uh, let, let's say again, I repeat, uh, uh, not all the things are clear. It's not a complete theory at all. Just, I would just, uh, you know, these are just uh, some uh, things, some details that uh, at least in simple model, I believe that I understood, but there is no general picture at all about uh, uh, how to build this in general. So, but at least I can give you a simple proposal and uh, then we can discuss also if it's a good proposal. Um, yeah, so for this case, let me put it this way. So now, Okay, we have two independent guys now. So we have, uh, um, again, this, uh, let's say, this X field. But still, let, let's not forget, we can still build uh, the, the non abelian one form uh, field, uh, the, the, the non abelian very connection. Okay, so how what is the simple way to, to build something that has an uh, outwind? This is something that is non trivial. Is to have this, so again, I, again, this is my definition again. Uh, so now I use this B form, I and J, and then I take the matrix product, from the matrix product of the curvature tensor um, IJ. Okay, this is the curvature tensor for a, um, AI. I write explicitly just to, you know, uh, so if you take this, uh, the, the kinematic part, let's say, is a similar uh, to the abelian case, but then you have a, you know, you have a Potential, so you have a non-commutativity between I and J because that they are matrix valued in SU2 or other groups. Okay. Um, then, of course, these are the, the gauge transformations. So, why is why is okay? These are gauge field because, uh, let's say, um, this trans under gauge transformation, this is uh, this all transforms, and yeah, also F by J. Okay. This is important also for the people. Um, so differently from uh, the, the Abelian case, the proof of tensor is not gauge invariant. It's gauge uh, covariant. So that is important. So that's why, you, so technically this tells us that uh, in the Abelian situation, because F uh, IJ, the very proof of is the gauge invariant, it's an observable. But in the non-Abelian case, because the F IJ uh, transform in this way, technically speaking, it's not an observable. <laughs> so this also tells you why, why they are so different, the, the abelian and to the non-abelian case situation. Okay, so not, nothing is really getting by this level. 
And also, of course, the product of this transformer, okay, because of this definition here, also this guy transforms in this way, so it's not gauge invariant. But what is gauge invariant is uh, its trace. So the trace is completely gauge invariant, right? For this cycling property of the, of the trace. So this is gauge invariant. And actually, again, I remind you that, uh, you know, uh, even in this situation, you know, in the standard, okay, let's say again, the comparison with what we know already. So we can also take the trace of, um, you know, this uh, the one form very connection eventually. Um, this is not zero. When we break time as a symmetry, we keep uh, the generals in the band. Oh, we have, okay, let's say at least we have some degenerate bands, but we break time as a symmetry. This trace is not zero. And in, indeed, the integral of this trace, in, in, I'm talking about 2D in the prevent zone, still gives us the, the, the share number. So this is a way to calculate, for instance, again, the, you know, the share number in, in, a, in, a, you know, in a band general system, if T is broken. But if P, because of the gauge group, uh, is U2, it's not SU2. When we import an inertia symmetry, we have SU2 uh, connection, and the trace is still zero. So this is a, it's not something that we can use. Uh, sorry, uh, my bad. It's uh, yeah, we cannot use. Uh, um, sorry, I meant this one. Uh, the trace of this guy is zero if we keep uh, the inertia symmetry. So it's not usable for uh, my purpose. That I said, as I said, I want to be uh, preserved. But if we take now the trace of this bij, oh, it is a different story. It's not uh, zero. Not zero anymore. With the, the right normalization, uh, let's say, okay, let's call, uh, well, not call, but yeah, gamma, let's say, yeah, gamma, please don't confuse with the gamma matrices. This, this guy gives us uh, basically the model of this, still gives us this Z2 number for the BHZ, and also gives, so it's an alternative way to the calculation, gives also the Euler number. So this thing uh, is an alternative way to calculate the audio and value today. Okay, so far, I mean, I only talk about you know model that we know, and then we don't need okay, we don't need anything of this stuff because we know how to calculate the Z2 number, the volume number, without any things feel that you know in this situation. But now I, I, I give to you an example of a model where there are, was unknown. I mean, at least uh, uh, it seems there is a topological and trivial phase in 3D. And something that at least can be calculated with this idea. For sure, can be calculated in many different ways. But at least, uh, I, okay, this is uh, something that for sure works here. At least I'm going to try to convince you. Um, yeah, so let me. So this is my last example of uh, this uh, idea. So basically, again, let me. Yeah, okay, let, let's keep this. Okay, this is not okay. So I'm still uh, considering, sorry, this um, this Fermion model, but now the gamma matrices are eight times eight, and they are real. They are real. So they, I have again p square plus one. I have inversion. I have also chiral symmetry all together. Uh, let's say S. Okay. So um, this means that if we look at the energy spectrum, it's it's like this. It's simple. It's a direct. In the simplest case, we can say okay. This is the lattice version of the Dirac theory with, the, with this reducible representation. So let's say, okay, this is zero and zero and so on. So this is for all the general now. So now, as I said, we cannot use the Euler invariant. The Euler invariant doesn't work. The Euler, it's only well defined with S so to, uh, you know, well, I raise it, but I said somewhere. <laughs> so the natural, so the, the connection, whatever we want to do here has to deal with S so for because there are four bands that generate. It says so because it deals with the real, a real vector bundle. And again, um, okay, if we were in 4D, that was fine because in, in 4D, you have the second, second order number, H5. Okay, then you can calculate the topology line for the of these guys. Uh, but in 3D, what, what you can do, so what is really there something that makes sense is gauge invariant topological. Um, this is the, the very important uh, message of this higher form that comes from the case, is that uh, um, the F, uh, again, the FIJ, because it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a curva of tensor, satisfy the Bianchi identity. So, you know, you know, 
ni su satisfacer al final ya que de way, sino de proper gauge connection. So the, the decay o, you know, the completely anti-symmetric needs to be zero. It's uh, completely obvious. I mean, even in the non-appian case, it needs to be there. The, but F uh, is not the case. So this is not true with the, 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 the B, sorry, the B. So because now the B contains the, the, the six field. Now this guy, if you capture this guy, it's completely gauge invariant, so it's not just gauge covariant. So this is, uh, you know, you can define now a three form field, I, J, K, let's say that it's not Hamiltonian, and this basically the higher curvature tensor, so like this is a two form, but it's a gauge, it's, a, it's a also, it's not only gauge form, it's two form, it's also a curvature tensor. Now this is a, a three form curvature tensor of these two forms. And this transforming in a similar way like this guy, because also H uh, transforming this way under you know, some gauge transformation. Uh, hmm? Ah, so, sorry, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, no, sorry, my bad. So, no, sorry, the, the blanket entity is violated, okay, let me define the, the fix here, yeah, sorry. So, IJK is like this, so, again, this is very similar to the curva to tensor of the calvary field in, you know, it's a but it's the non abelian version. So I have to put the covariant derivative, not the standard derivative. I, uh, and then you have the, the cycling uh, you know, condition for so B, K, and then D again of J, B, K, uh, B, K, I, and finally D of K of B, I, J. Okay? So this is, sorry, this is the right definition. And satisfy again, so transforming this way. And then what we can do again? So, <laughs> so it's a sort of tau, it's a tau of this, because now, like uh, the group of tensor that I said before, no, uh, we can also define in 3D, in 3D, so in 3D K space, better if I write here, sorry. So uh, I'm saying, okay, I have my 3D Brillo and zone, right? It's a 3D system gapped with this gauge group. And now you see, this is uh, an SO4. Non abelian to four. And the simplest thing is to generalize uh, again, uh, we'll check Z, uh, the non abelian, because also in this case, I can define you know, the integral now in uh, uh, the k of uh, the three dimensional torus of H, let's say KX, KY, KZ. No? Okay. And this, uh, sorry, at the, tra at the trace, of course, because this now is now the integral is gauge value. And this makes sense. And indeed, also here, I get the topological uh, invariant. And now depends on, okay, now in particular, I have to specify uh, what is the, the microscopic model, sorry. Because here I want to write explicitly um, that here you have again, um, yeah. So is uh, gamma x, uh, uh, yeah, sine and kx. Gamma y sign, but it is a three, okay, it's the 3D version of the BHZ with uh, this different representation. Now let's try it. So gamma um, x, y, z sign uh, k, z, and uh, then there is the, the fourth gamma, gamma four of the mass there minus cosinus of kx, minus cosinus ky, minus cosinus of kz. And again, you can think. Uh, you take a 3D lattice model, you put some fermions with the general bands because of inversion and time reversal, you end up and you put a transform, you get this something like that. Um, yeah, so now let's then, uh, so what is the topological number that we get here? Yeah, it's simply what I get here, let's call, okay, let me write everything, so it's two pi squared. Uh, so let me call this, uh, yeah, C of, uh, C3, it's not the Turcher number, it's, it's just, uh, just a number. So uh, this guy is basically minus eight uh, for M in this regime, in this uh, you know, range. And then it's um, four, if we get, uh, no, the mass term is between one and three. Okay, I normalize, of course, so there are many, you know, Sorry, I for the tunneling, I'm too big, uh, you know, the, tun the, the tunneling in one, you, know, you can imagine, just to simplify the notation. And then you get zero. Um, yeah, for when this M, the mass term is uh, in the lattice, is bigger than three. 
you know, something you know, similar to what we have uh, you know, in the other system. But at least again, as I said, this, you cannot understand uh, this phase if you deal with just the um, standard on abelian berry connection. So it's impossible. So you have to really somehow work out. I mean, as I said, there are for sure many alternatives to this calculation uh, that should give rise to this number. And then we don't need this uh, structure that is a bit, uh, maybe it looks very exotic. But comes from the analogy with ILHB, okay? as I said. So if we have a momentum space, periods, momentum space, uh, vortices, momentum space, uh, electromagnetic field, why we cannot have also momentum space x field from that structure and calculate and have the you know, topology from that guy, or build you know, this tower of higher form in this way, so at least as a proposal. Um, I don't know how much time I have for the last, well, I don't have time anymore, so I will uh, stick to this uh, pseudo emission story. But, uh, I will be just a short comment on this that, uh, you know, all this story that I told you works also for this pseudo emission system. Because uh, in the pseudo emission system, you can define, uh, you, can, you can consider this a biocomonal condition. So you have, uh, you know, a left and right uh, uh, block and a vector. But all these things work because uh, in this pseudo emission special, uh, similar to the PT invariant system. So there are real, real spectra, they, they have a perfect bulk edge correspondence without interaction, no skin effect. So the X field can be built also there. So we can understand also non emission or let's say pseudo emission uh, topology insulator, pseudo emission, um, let's say, Euler insulator, pseudo emission sedimental. Uh, that in general is not possible with, if you break completely, you know, if you have a complex spectrum, all this story is for sure very more complicated. But at least uh, this gauge theory works again, uh, and if you're interested, again, uh, at least for the simple model, the 2D, the 2D pseudo emission VHZ model, you can look at uh, this paper here with my colleague in, uh, in China uh, from one two university. Okay, um, yeah, sorry. I thank you for your attention. Uh, this is, uh, this is the end. <laughs> Questions? Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, please go ahead. Uh, so I think on the on the board you said the BHZ uh, model, there's a Z2, and the, in your calculation, the, the integral of B gives you the- but The uh, absolute value, I think yeah, the absolute yes. value. So, so when, sorry, I missed the, the Z2, Z2-ness of this invariant. Why is it related to Z2? Oh, no, well, yeah, no, I say that, yeah, um, you can't, uh, you know, I, I think this, uh, you know, um, let's say the, the absolute value of this, uh, let's say, okay, here. Um, ah, okay, I would say it. Right. The absolute value of this guy here, oh, in the two, yeah, sorry, in the two degree one zone. And this thing, this is the, yeah, what I get. So it's uh, topological for this regime, a non-topological regime is, a, I mean, in the BHZ model with inversion symmetry, this is exactly right what we get uh, in the standard calculation. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, just this is what, what I said. Um, I see. So um, uh, another question is this um, tensor gauge field and uh, uh, the, the field strength H, I, J, K. And uh, I think two form, I think I usually think it's associated to like a, Loop like or a string like object. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, what is the fundamental object which is charged under this uh, B? Is there okay, very, very good question. But uh, let me tell you this. So, uh, let's pick up the, this idea of the monopole in 4D that I mentioned to you. It's true that in general, the, the two form, also the, let's say also the opinion one that is simpler. The, uh, usually we say, okay, the, this Carl Brown field. They can only couple to extended object, as you said, string uh, like object. But actually, this is a special situation in which this is not the case. So, if I am in 4D space, let's say 4D K space, so I have a, uh, let's say, a bilateral or a Dirac theory, uh, no, yeah, let's say without the general space, opinion. So, I am in a, a topological defect here. So, this is a source. So, then you integrate on uh, this sphere. This is a point like source of the Calderon field. So this situation doesn't, doesn't, it's not related to any extended object. And you see, if you take a slice, this for this system, I get a 3D, let's say, 
chiral topology in Soledo, because I, I need chirality for D, and in 3D becomes gapped because I take it lies. And so still in this particular situation, it, the source of the field is uh, point-like. Um, it will be different in, um, in higher dimensions. So if, there are monopoles in 5D that are extended objects and they're source of the Kalbramov field. That is, that, that will be sort of, a, let's say, mm, nodal line, not, mm, yeah, nodal line semi-metal in 5D could be a source of B field because it's sort of, a, you know, the analog of a string like object, the, the nodal line. But in this situation, because also, also everything is stuck, yeah? So it's a magnetic, so it's, uh, I don't tell the dynamical part. Um, this Calbramont is only the magnetic section uh, part because the electric field, okay, that will be different. So if we put dynamics, let's say, we have a time dependent Hamiltonian, then we have also the, the electric component in momentum speed. That, that will be, yeah, that will be more complicated and eventually associated to an, ex, to an extended object like string. But the, um, in this situation, it's really a point like uh, source static in momentum space. Uh, and you know, give rise to yeah. So basically, as you said, the integral so of H of H on S three, who is this guy? It's basically the the third homotopy group of the three D sphere. That is that. So this is that, this is the underlying topology that is invented. But that's why it's justified these things in, as um, effecting for D, and the topology is on the three D sphere because of, of the third homotopy group of that three. It is also said for the third homotopy group of uh, the 3D um, Brillouin zone and 3D torus. Uh, and, and this works for uh, insulators in 3D. Something so complicated is uh, in non abelian situation, okay, that I discussed. Uh, they're not Z, of course, I mean, they're the general bands. But I think more or less uh, this is the picture, even in the, um, the general band case, for the model considered here. But there are of course, other uh, possible extension with the uh, yeah, eventual extended object that looks like strings. Okay, thank you. More questions? Okay, I don't think there are more questions and we thank the speaker again. And, uh,